Did you know that IQ tests have consistently demonstrated a 15 point gap between black and white people? Keep watching and I'll explain why environmental racism and not genetics offers better evidence for why this gap exists. My name is Bhavan, and this episode we're covering A Terrible Thing to Waste by Harriet Washington. We trust Harriet because she's one of the leading researchers of environmental racism and has written a number of books on the subject. This book explores the widespread use of chemicals in our everyday lives and its effects on all of our bodies. However, the result of industrial and government policy have specifically and disproportionately poisoned the brains of people of color. This poisoning and the damage it does to the brain allows racists to continue to believe false claims to intelligence. This book begins by examining the history of IQ testing, which was used as a mechanism to prove white people were superior. The history of race and class and the biases that come with it was combined with cherry-picked data by scientists to conclude that intelligence was solely based on genetics. Because we cannot change our own genes, racists have been successful in promoting propaganda that white people will always be superior and non-white people deserve negative societal outcomes. The belief is widespread that people of color can never be uplifted through education or other public policies. People act in bad faith when they claim that high intelligence causes good well-being, which acts as a defense for why white people stand atop everyone else in Western society. Using this motivation, those with economic and political power have been able to justify placing polluting factories and using chemicals without testing in locations where people of color live and work. While this chemical poisoning has an obvious health cost, the book focuses on the specific damaging effects done to the brain, especially to the development of young children. This leads into a negative feedback loop that progressively damages the cognitive functions of people of color, which then creates a self-fulfilling prophecy that racists use when they state that only white people can gain in intelligence. The author uses several case studies to showcase how the management of corporations knew that their products themselves or the production processes were harmful, but they are able to make profits for decades. The United States federal government policy dictates that safety, deaths are, safety tests are only done when a chemical is suspected of being destructive. Even if a chemical can be proven to be unhealthy for a community, industry has several tricks that it uses so it doesn't have to change the way it uses chemicals. Corporations have the money and the connections to lobby politicians to ensure that laws are not changed. They finance scientists and public affairs firms to put out pseudo-scientific research that they say proves the chemical is not harmful to humans, and then they blame the victims for not protecting themselves. It is not only industrial chemicals that are poisoning the minds of young people of color. Viruses and microbes are just as detrimental to intelligence. Racism causes the view that viruses are brought over from abroad and that people of color are dirty. Environmental racism also permeates the education system. The schools that have a population of kids who are of color or black don't get enough funding for education itself, but they also have to deal with dirty water, unhealthier food, less clean janitorial services, and older physical structures that may have asbestos or other unsafe building materials. Children are at a particularly vulnerable development stage for their brain and they will be negatively impacted for the rest of their lives. The author brings up the need to understand the specific American cultural focus on personal responsibility for one's problems, which lets industry off the hook. There's only so much you can do as an individual if you live in an area which is near an industrial polluter. Also, it is difficult to bring the wider public on your side as chemicals that destroy the brain are not as salient as those that we can clearly see affect the rest of the body. With the money spent rebuilding the richer areas that will be eroded because of climate change, it is likely that the brains of people of color will be even more negatively impacted by environmental racism. The author suggests that there are two solutions that we can begin to implement to protect the brains of people of color, and these solutions need to be done at the same time. At an individual level, we can make lifestyle changes to our diet and hygiene, but it is as a collective and public level that action will be most needed. Political changes through organizing and activism to ban chemicals that disproportionately affect and poison people of color is the most important movement that we can take to protect ourselves. This book showcases very clearly that environmental factors caused by racist, industrial, and government policies can explain the IQ gap, and there are measures that we can take to close it.